Good evening, everyone. It's Tom Sidney Bushnell, aka Numbers, here from Sight Club, from the Tom Numbers Show, News of Tom Numbers, and Top of Your Game. I should mention that one because President Trump likes to use that reference. And I've got two amazing guests with me today. I've got Dr. Jan Halper Hayes, and I've got her colleague and friend, Rob Cunningham. Jan, Rob, welcome to the show. How are both of you? Thanks for having us. It's just really a treat. It's a pleasure to be on your show, Tom. Thank you for having me as well. It's a pleasure. It's great to have you both on here. So you're both welcome, Dr. Jan and, and Rob. Thank you for coming. So, um, Dr. Jan, I saw you a few months ago. We've spoken for the last few months on and off, and, and uh, I saw you hit the airwaves. I think it was on GB News, and you were dropping some real, like, some amazing information and like things that resonated with our community. And we're like, who's this lady? Who is she? You know, and obviously you've been around for a while, but you became to my attention sometime last year. And I was like, Oh, wow. You know, um, and Rob, you're very good on, on all the, uh, the currencies and the, the banking stuff and all the money stuff. And so we've got some good questions and we've got some good things that I think we can go through today. Um, and, uh, I'll start it off. Okay, this so this is my first this is my first point I wanted to to bring up and to ask. Um and you'll see where we go with this. So one thing that I wanted to ask you in particular, Jan, was and we touched upon it a little bit in, in messages we've had over the last few weeks. But um we hear all about all these indictments of subpoenas and all the legal things going on. And I'm not a legal person, but I'm aware there are certain things going on. I don't get into the minutiae of it because I'm not legally trained. That's not my field. But I have a question, um, and you gave me a nice basic answer. You said that the subpoenas at the lower level, they're, being, they're in operation, they're happening. So I had a more detailed question in regards to that. So there's two parts to this, or maybe three parts. A lot of us believe and feel that a lot of the heavy lifting has been done. You mentioned that in your interview that you did on the TV a number of months ago and how people are very scared about, they're scared of President Trump because of what's going on and what has gone on. And he said ages ago, even before 2020, that he caught the swamp, he caught them all, no one could have done it by me. So I was like, okay, game over from one perspective, but we're letting everything kind of filter down and everything play out. Um, I feel there may be a kind of a Rico moment where we see a lot of this globally, everybody kind of unites and sees things happening because we always hear there are things happening. And then, you know, my family or friends down the road, they might be like, well, nothing's happening. But then there's us in the community that are looking at things and then there's all the stuff prior. So there's kind of maybe different plots of timelines. But in terms of subpoenas, and you said that those are operative, are we going to see the lower levels down? So people that were caught in the swamp, maybe lawyers, um, people embezzling money on behalf of the ones higher up, because they've been involved directly or indirectly, are we going to see things physically in regards to them, such as maybe maybe the law authorities are already onto them during this kind of last three and a half years since 2020? Maybe some have been arrested on house arrest or they've had certain court cases They've been tied up in lots of things, but then they're maybe kind of moving around more freely now. But is that is that a, a signal that the big boys are waiting when everything gets globally disclosed, uh, disclosed and they're going to pounce on them because they're, they're already under their radar? So that's my question. There's a few questions there, but that's, that's the feel of what I'd like to know about. Okay, let's back up a minute because originally there were approximately 250,000 sealed indictments. Okay. All right. Then, since, <clears throat> I don't know if it's 2017 or 18, but the U.S., the JAG, the um, uh, from the Navy, which is the uh, Je Judicial Advocate General, those are the yeah. lawyers, all right? There have been ships off of Australia, off of Japan, off of the UK, down by Southampton, uh, in the Mediterranean, I think somewhere around Italy. Um, and there are several others that I'm not exactly sure because I think they move. 
So it is all done through the military. This is yeah. nothing that will be done in any regular civilian court system because um, with the military, there is not uh, based on proven or without a reasonable doubt. No, there's none of that. It's taken care of one to three days. And then whatever the verdict is, the person is taken care of. But then what has happened is that the number of indictments went up because as they started capturing more people and making deals with them, then more and more that were involved in any of the illegal activity um, were revealed. So it's, I think it's something that is not going to finish this time, this year, 2025. Who knows? <coughs> Excuse me. It could go, it could go through 2026 because there's so much that needs to be taken care of. But the other way that I explain it is they have needed to take out the really bad culprits, such as a George Soros, who funds a lot of the terrorist, the domestic terrorist activity. They yeah. have had to get rid of those people, and then they need to keep going down. The other thing that I've explained to people is that I went through a really bad depression just after the 2022 midterms because I thought justice is going to be served. We're going to get them. And yeah. even though I sit on a task force, uh, which we operate in silos, so someone that I might know on a different task force, we don't get to share information. I didn't find out for many months after 2022 that that was when they started going after the lower levels. That's We have 3,140 counties in the United States. So they are digging down into the criminal activity that has been going on there and capturing those people as well. Okay. And Tom, and Tom, if I may, just for contextual purposes, it's it's important for everyone to understand that you could have anywhere from one to 99 names in an indictment. So you may have 200,000 indictments, but you may have 6 million people's names in the indictment. So it's Ooh. critical to know it's not a one-to-one -one ratio there. And, That's a great point. Uh, you know, and, 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 and secondly, I mean, it could take to 2028 to get the last one prosecuted. It's not going to be all over a, a year or a month or a quarter, I don't believe, but it's it's so important to understand why we have to go down. It's almost like a doctor trying to get that last cancer cell out of a, yeah. of a you know, before they sell you up. 80% is not enough. 90% is yeah. not enough. You want to try to get all of it out before yeah. you close up the wound. Otherwise, you take one guy out and there's 1,800 people that want to take his place. There's a, a bad actors that want to come right back in and backfill. So it, it has to be comprehensive if, if it's going to be done correctly. And what's happened is not only um, did Trump expand Gitmo, if anyone has seen the maps, the comparison of when he took office and what it looks like now, but yeah. they have had to build out a huge facility in Guam as well. Huh. The, rumor, the rumors yeah. are what I've read, and I cannot verify this, but that's maybe like the media's Guantanamo, <laughs> you know, for a lot of the more, you know, he's always said the media is the virus. They're yeah. the ones that amplify the narrative, especially yeah. the false narratives. So I don't know why they would might want to have different segmentation of, you know, quarantine camps for different elements of the cabal, but it would make sense on some level that they might want to keep people separated. I don't, I don't know. Well, it, it's <laughs> called space. It's called the ability to fit all of these culprits <laughs> in. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and so Guam has enough acreage to be able to expand. I'm waiting to hear what the next territory is going to be, where we're going to stick them, maybe the Mariana Islands. 
I'd heard that maybe Greenland and Iceland were places that were possibly possibilities. Um, definitely heard about the barges, you know, the big ships, like you've mentioned. Um, the interesting thing in numbers about Guantanamo, so Guantanamo comes to 107, which comes to military, and it also comes to Trump's. So it's like it's Trump's Bay, it's Guantanamo Bay, it's Military Bay, which is interesting. Um, and Cuba is 27, which is JFK. So it's like, okay, yeah, this has been going on for a while. They've been planning this for a while. So, um, yeah, okay. What do you feel in terms of a RICO kind of event, like a mass RICO event? People talk about mass arrests. RICO, RICO's in some of the films, like the Batman films, it, any thoughts on Rico? Rico's 45 in numbers, Trump's 45th president. Right. Um, no, I, I haven't heard anything to that effect. And I, just in you asking me, I don't know how, how that would happen. Because so if we have a million um, National Guards around the globe, yeah, um, then that activity is going on and people are being swooped up. Uh, I don't think that they would want that to be public because right now, the degree of the awakening is that if you have to look at it on a spectrum, yeah. there is like, oh gosh, I, I, I realize we've been lied to, but yes. I still have you know, to go through all that shock and open my eyes and do my research mm -hmm. to what I don't call them the truthers. I call them the seers. They have been able to see things for a long time and understand yeah. it and digest it. So we've got that spectrum going on. And if there was anything mass, it would freak people out all around the globe. Seers, I like that. That's a good Good and Tom, isn't today the day that we just transitioned into the era of Aquarius from Cancer or Sad or whatever the area? Yeah, was. I think it was, wasn't it a conjunction of, was it Capricorn. Pluto and Aquarius? Capricorn to, to Aquarius. To Aquarius. Uh, yesterday to today, I believe. Uh, Capricorn, okay. I saw something about Pluto and Aquarius. But yeah, Aquarius starts today, I believe, yeah. Well, let, let me, if you don't mind, Tom, talk about a RICO that's you brought the word up and there's a RICO in my sphere of study. Okay. That I'm, yeah. I'm very aware of. And, and, yeah. you know, it, if we go back to the old adage, follow the money, you know, the, there's scriptural texts, you know, that talk about the root of all evil is the love of money, right? Not yeah. money itself. Cause money's just a tool, right? Yeah. But it's the love of money. And so central bankers and all the nefarious acts they're responsible for, we know how, you know, the, the Bank of International Settlements is the central bank of all central bankers, right? Well, there's a cartel, if you will, a RICO that's attempting to do sort of the CBDC writ large around the world to take us to a central banking monetary system 2.0, okay? The digital banking, the kind of the CCP model with the digital credit scores. And how would they do that in America? Because as America goes, the world reserve currency, if they could switch it to the next system, so goes the world, right? So if they could get the Federal Reserve to issue CBDCs, how would they do that? And there's this, one of the major cryptocurrency projects is involved with JP Morgan Chase, the CCP, uh, uh, Russian Canadian citizens, and a lot of corruption in a scheme to create basically the next crypto sounding pseudo decentralized digital monetary system which is just basically the current version of the central banking system on steroids amplified by quantum powered ai and social credit scores and and crypto sounding decentralization when it's anything but that and so what you have is the media giving maximum airplay for 8 to 10 years on bitcoin and ethereum Okay, well, mm -hmm. Ethereum is a problem. Ethereum, as its genesis block, is a CCP-controlled blockchain entity that issued tokens to Ethereum's founder and co-founder and president 
with ties to JP Morgan and non-citizens around the world trying to be the it token for the next gen monetary system. If these people are prosecuted and exposed as I believe they will be, that is the greatest RICO criminality lawsuit that will ever be prosecuted. It will be the reason that we go to a sound money system that's based mm -hmm. on distributed ledger technology, and we don't go towards the Chinese digital credit score enslavement system. So that that is at the heart of a lot of the debate about what's going on with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and, and digital assets and all of that that's a big debate around the world. Because at the end of the day, if we want to break up these centralized financial centers that control narratives and control the who and control the world, you know, the UN and control the World Economic Forum. They do that through the system that they installed on us to take all of our energy and time and labor and substitute for their fake money. Yeah. If we went, if we went back to gold money and sound money on the local basis issued by each nation, there would be no funding for all of these global NGOs that rain hell all over the world. So yeah. that's why they don't want there to be a decentralization process to take place. Very interesting. You brought it nicely. I spoke to Jan a little bit about this a couple of days ago or yesterday. So there's a lot of thought out there talking about the possibility of, of JP Morgan declaring bankruptcy publicly on the 23rd of January. So one, two, three, mm -hmm. which is silver plus gold in numbers. But, um, what what's your what's your thoughts on that we've tried to research it mm. um it, it's we've only uh, at least i've only seen one guy that said it in a video and I, I never heard of him before that and it's sort of caught on but we haven't been able to find anything to validate it have you i i can tell you that the uh... The CEO of Bank of America spoke at Davos last week, and he talked about how it was insane or irrational to think that he needed to meet Basel III compliance standards, which would require 10% more capital reserves for Bank of America in order to be in compliance, because that would require, in essence, about another $186 billion for them to put in, in, in reserves, and they don't have it. Bank of America would basically, if they were to be compliant, either have to declare bankruptcy, uh, have to declare some sort of reorganization. And again, there's a Chapter 7 and a Chapter 11 bankruptcy. So one is more violent than the other, if you will. But uh, I believe all of the big banks, Chase, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, a lot of the big ones are simply not going to be able to meet the requirements for Basel III. So then the next question is, is, how does that information get rolled out so the public doesn't panic and go running to the banks and everybody try to get all their money out of it? So there's a there's a that tightrope of how do you keep the public from 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 panicking but enforcing the fact that these banks are insolvent and making them admit that they're insolvent. Can you yeah. explain Basel three to me again, please? Sure. Ba Basel three is just from Basel, Switzerland. It's a basically mm -hmm. it's a central banking. Uh, regulatory body, if you will, that just says you've got to have X amount of reserves. They're the ones that invented the fractional reserve lending standards that say that the banks can lend out 10 times more money than they have in reserves. Those They play games with these regulations all the time, like during 2008 and during COVID. Sometimes they'll lower the 10% reserves to zero, and they'll just let the banks print in, in, ad infinitum. You know, mm -hmm. and everybody needs money. You know, everybody needs a loan. Zero percent interest. Come on in. We'll give away any kind of amount of money we want. And we don't have to have any kind of standards. And then when they go back and they change it again, they can play with these Basel three standards to regulate central banking, which that in and of itself, I believe, Tom, is, is really the I mean, I posted something earlier today that said, what was the what was God's form of money? <laughs> what was the, wasn't Jesus killed over money because he flipped over some tables and five days later he was killed? What was America's first form of money? Why was Abe Lincoln killed? Greenbacks. Why was JFK killed? Silver dollars. Why was Reagan shot? Talking about gold standards. 
Why is Trump so hated? I believe he came down the escalator to flip over the central banker's money tables and basically get rid of this concentrated form of virulent power. So if you follow the money throughout history, you can realize that's how they control us. That's how they make us transhuman. That's how that's how they do yeah. everything, you know? Yeah, it is. You say President Trump come da coming down the escalator. So the first piece of gematria in his presidency above Melania's head and his head was currency exchange. They actually said there was currency exchange and it was right there on the tin. It's like, okay, he's going to, he's going to do. And he said it before, you know, in press conferences, there was a, I think there was a woman in, from China asking him about the um, exchange rates. He said, it's something I've spoken about for a long, long time. And there will come a point quicker than people believe or think where we'll be on a level playing field and level playing field in numbers is one, seven, six, which is, Back to the Future 176. It's uh, it's also November the 5th, 176. Um, so he's told us that. And then he even joked about the RV, you know, during the height yes. of it in 2020, yeah. you know. <laughs> so you're right, because, you know, the, the, the mandate mechanism, the fractional reserve banking is a, is a brilliant way to just hoover everybody's labor, time, energy, God-given rights it just sucks the life out of everybody and all arguments and divorces and wars and everything they all come down to that thing because we've been lied to about our sovereignty and they've tricked us and uh, and, and it ruins everything yeah i couldn't agree more with what you've just said rob yeah, yeah. and hoover means to back you sack of a, sack, I got it. yeah, I got hoover. It. Hey, Jager, hoover. yeah. <laughs> Hoover, yeah, vacuum, hoover it up, and that's what it is. It's right. like, yeah, one I've been person trying in the room. To educate people you know? here about the difference between <laughs> whining and whinging, because I love whinging. <laughs> I mean, the word. I don't like to do it, but I love the word whinging. <laughs> yeah. It's it's amazing how they did how they've done it, how they got away with it. Because it's like if you, you know, imagine if you're playing a game. I don't know, like Monopoly, not quite, but there's 100 people in a room and one person in the corner has the ability to give out money and print money. And then it's like they eventually just create infinite inflation and everybody else is destitute. And they're the bank, they're the ones that got the money. It's just, it's a, it's a, it's a financial vacuum. Yeah. It's a, it's a scam. It's, it's a, a big it's scam. A it's, a matter, it's, a, it's a scam. Yeah. And, and and where Jan's expertise is, is you know, as the conversation migrates into the city of London, it, it's 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 important. It has helped me, Tom, invaluably. To you know, there's a BC and an AD, right? There's also yeah. in this world of where we live now. There's before 1871 and after 1871. And if people aren't aware of the magnitude of what took place in 1871, that that changed America. From a constitutional republic that recognized self-evident rights, self-evident truths, and it converted us into a corporation with the District of Columbia becoming a sovereign, non-American territory owned and controlled by the City of London and the Vatican City, which then gave them sovereign immunity to lord over their new asset. 1871 was a deal that was negotiated with USSS Grant after the Civil War. And basically, and it, no, in a nut... It, oh, yeah, ahead. okay. Well, it, it wasn't... It was negotiated in... It was settled in the international court. Yes. Ulysses S. Grant should have insisted on using the 14th Amendment. Mm -hmm. And as a result... And, and it actually goes before 1871 because yes. of how corrupt they are. They started planting the seeds to get us to bankruptcy. And that started actually in the early 1800s. Mm -hmm. Then Britain claimed to be neutral in our civil war, but they weren't. And the bankers, what they had done was that because the city of London is both wealth and trade, they convinced the Union, the North, to be able to take money from our citizens and promise 
to pay them back with gold or silver. So in other words, the fiat currency, they were determined to make it worthless while the bankers that were all part of the cabal in the city of London were buying bonds, but they were financing the South. And so the way in which the South paid for things is they would send cotton over and there were ammunition um, facilities, manufacturing facilities in the UK that were sending the artillery back over to the South. And so this was plotted for decades to lead us into that kind of bankruptcy. And when we had to pay that money back, they had, they, they, they had us. And this is where Ulysses S. Grant came into play is that why he didn't say what we need to do is use our 14th Amendment and bring charges against. It then forced them, Britain and the U.S., to get it resolved in the international court, which took our Constitution away, and then forced every other nation that if they had a dispute, it could not be settled based on their Constitution or their laws. It had to be done through the international court which then eventually led to the League of Nations, which then led to the UN, which then led to the World Economic Forum. And Tom, to, that is a beautiful point. She said it so eloquently. And, and this is what's so critical for us to understand is that when they disconnected the Constitution of the United States, it was like cutting the electrical cord, okay? They disconnected common law rights and put us into a maritime sort of statutory in, environment where the maritime laws don't recognize, you know, self-evident truths. They don't recognize common law. They it's a British accreditation registry that the Bar Association, American Bar, the Bar Association stands for British Accreditation Registry, and those that pass the bar swore an allegiance to a private membership organization domiciled in the city of London, the British Accreditation Registry. So we have a monetary system and a legal, legal system that's really an admiralty law system that runs our country. It's not our constitution. There's The IRS code has more power to run our country than the constitutional rights do to protect our rights. And just a tidbit is that in our constitution, anyone to become a politician could not have a title, any kind of title after their name, including lawyers are referred to as Esquire. And, mm. and so technically, all of our so-called politicians who belong to the Bar Association are really traitors. They are. Actually, actually, the document said that if you got a title of nobility from anywhere outside the United States, you lost your citizenship. You were no, you could not only not hold office, you lost your American citizenship if you took money from from nations outside of America because you had divided loyalty, and that was not allowed. When are we going to see the effects of this? Like, so with lawyers and. You just said, you know, they're traitors. So how? when are we going to actually see the results of that? Because if you're a traitor, you like, you sorry. know. Can you tell us through Gematria when Brunson might happen? <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at that last year with uh, with uh, with Juan. Um, you know what is interesting? So I was just looking at 1871. 1871 comes to 217. There's a lot of good numbers in 200 for 217. One is um, Lady Diana Frances Spencer, 217. Mission Impossible, 217. Uh, Tom Sidney Bushnell, the way I introduced my show, is 217. But 1871 is 217. And also Houses of Parliament, 217. And so that all ties into November 5th. The election is this year, November 5th. Um, there's been big events in London. We were talking off screen about the Great Fire of London. But 217... There's some good ones, but then 1871, I just did it, and it's like, 
Wow, that's that's there. That's that's two seventeen. Wow. Tom, what city of London? So this is a good one, Jan. There's good as as with all numbers, they know the power ones and they both sides take them. So if you do uh well, there's two. If we do the city of London, okay. So 185 is the city of London. World Trade Center is the city of London. So 185, World Trade Center. So there's, you know, there's a mirror effect of that. Right. But also on the good side, 185 is Donald John Trump. Book of Revelation is also 185 Donald John Trump. The Silver Reset is also 185 Donald John Trump. A non-fungible token is also 185, and he came out with his own Trump cards. So both sides love the 185. Um, and and Tom, uh, Tom, just to interrupt you, there was a, a big scuttlebutt about an inconsistency that Donald Trump issued his NFTs through the Ethereum platform, and he liquidated them all in the last month or so because of, I think, the problems with the Ethereum that we were just talking about. So he, for whatever reason, got rid of that wallet and got rid of all of those proceeds that came in from selling his Trump NFTs. Ah, uh, so what are they on now? I don't know. I don't know. We just know he cashed out. <laughs> did he? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, he did. So what uh, is Crown yeah. Corporation? Well, Crown is 73. Uh, a corporation, let's have a look. What would that be? Um, so C O R P Corp O Ray. If I've spelt that right. C O R P O R A T I O N Corporation. Right. That's one forty four. Um, which is serendipity, actually. It's uh, twelve times twelve is one hundred forty four. You got the one hundred forty four thousand. But then Crown seventy three. <laughs> you knew the answer, Jan. <laughs> so Crown Corporation. Is uh, seventy three plus one four four, which is two seventeen. Yeah, did you know that one? I'm sure you did. I suspected it, but okay. I, you know, I, I only because of you, I'm new to to gematria, but I wanted to make sure. Well, that's thanks for pointing that one out because so Crown Corporation two seventeen, eighteen seventy one two seventeen, Houses of Parliament two seventeen, Mission Impossible two seventeen. Wow. Lady Diana Francis Spencer 217. So both sides, they love their numbers, both sides. Yeah. We're taking them back. Yeah. Wow. Another one, interestingly enough, is United Kingdom. That's 146. That's that's um New Jerusalem. And there's there's hymns about Jerusalem being here with Blake and um Truth Social's 146, Central Casting's 146, Ivanka Trump 146. But New Jerusalem is 146. Great Britain, uh, sorry, United Kingdom is 146. Um, hmm, Crown Corporation. Have you, ever done, have you ever done Jared Kushner? Yes, I've done. So Kushner's 96, February. Uh, is Jared spelled J A R E D? Not double R, no? No. Okay, so Kushner. Yeah, Kushner is 96. So Jared. Jar red. Uh, ha, huh, Jared. So G, J, A, R, E, D. That's 134, Jared Kushner. Does he have a middle name? I don't know. I can look it up. Yeah. Well, one, so Jared is 38, which is gold. Balance, change, death, fire, sand, beach. But there's 134, which is um, Regent's Park, which is uh, central London. Other, but yeah, Kushner. Okay, Kushner's 96. February, Zimbabwean, Atlantis. Mm. Kushner. 
I met Ivanka, so she kind of activated me with the numbers, I feel. I bumped into her accidentally, serendipitously. Sorry, and, who? Uh, Ivanka. Ah. I met her in I met her in Manhattan on June eleventh, actually, five days before Donald came down the escalators. And June eleventh is um is one forty one in numbers. Tom Bushnell one forty one. I only worked this out later. Um, and it's the 162nd day of the year, 162. Um, if you do 162 plus the word day, it comes to 192 of Uncle Marie Trump. And we took the photograph together right in front of uh, Del Monaco Plaza. And that's 146 in numbers, which is Ivanka Trump. So it all kind of lined up, you know. Wow. So, um, and Manhattan, where we were, is 92 numbers. So that it all correlated. Um, yeah. Tom, One question. You, what, yeah, go what on. Is, what is June June 2, June the 2nd? What is that in Gematria? June 2nd? That was, that's 110. That's president. President, 110. Okay. What, what, what makes you ask? Uh, so my dad was born June 2nd. We were, my wife and I were married June 2nd. Um, XRP was invented and released on June the 2nd. It was born June the 2nd of 2012 as a okay. technology that I I believe was related to Executive Order 13772. Uh, uh, President Trump was, I think it was February 2nd or 3rd, 2017. He basically issued an executive order that said there's seven core principles for basically reforming the monetary system. And uh, and the co-signer of the report that was generated as a result of that executive order was signed by Steve Mnuchin and a gentleman that went to work for Ripple on their, as a board advisor. So XRP yeah. and Ripple and the distributed ledger system that I believe is going to be part of the infrastructure that's going to level the playing field the world over, the yeah. blockchain-based DLT. Was I mean, think about it. It was, it was you said currency exchange when he came down the escalator, and within yeah. the first nine days of him being in office, he signs an executive order that says these are the seven core principles that must occur to re-engineer the monetary system. And as America goes, so goes the world. So yeah. in July of 2018, about 18 months after he signed that, a 222-page report was signed by Steve Mnuchin and. Um, two, two, two. Two, two, two. 222 page report. Piece. Went to White House. Um, I just believe, I, I asked that question because I believe that XRP is a, it's a utility, it's a stateless utility liquidity algorithm that is going to allow NFTs and digital assets and digital tokenized forms of currency, tokenized forms of any kind of value will be able to go point to point, person to person, entity to entity with atomic settlement like that. And I believe XRP is that bridge liquidity algorithm token that will allow money to move back and forth without all of that fat and bureaucracy in between. All It'll cut through all the regulatory bodies of all the different organizations and and. There's an ISO, ISO International Standards Organization body that has recognized only about eight tokens out of 40,000. Mm. And XRP is one of them, along with XLM. It, so You are so good at explaining those seven principles that he put in the executive order. Would you go over it again, please? Uh, I don't oh. know if I have those committed to memory. Now oh. you put me on the spot and I, you look like a dodo bird. No, <laughs> I, look, he knows so much. I just thought I'd it like to know what those seven principles are. Yeah. Yes, I yes. Let me look them up. You you I'll keep chat talking. And I'll, and I'll okay. Yeah. It's interesting as well, Rob, when you said about that. You asked me about. Well, did you who asked about Jared Kushner? Was it you, Rob? I or did. Jan? Yeah. The so Jan. So Ripple plus XRP comes to. Jared Kushner 134 and XRP comes to 58, which is Ivanka. So that's interesting. And 76 is Ripple, which is Thomas. So Ivanka plus Thomas is 134, Ripple plus XRP. Wow. It's interesting that she's the one that I met. Um, I wanted to just ask a question going back to our first point of reference when we were talking about 
the levels of draining the swamp and how the National Guard has been activated and people are being rounded up. So there's millions of people on those, you know, you've got the indictments, but then you've got anywhere from one to 100 people or 99 people in each indictment. So there's millions of people potentially that are being rounded up. What's happening when they're taken away, and if they're dealt with in a military trial, you know, one to three days, quick trial, they're gone. What's, what's happening with the families that are relatively innocent in that? Are they, are we seeing Space Force activated? Are they swapping these people out so the family can kind of let things run and maybe, you know, a natural breakup and they're not devastated? Because that's devastating a lot of people if they weren't complicit in it. And if they're being rounded up and they're not coming back, how are those family members dealing with that? Are they being swapped out? Are the, are the ones that have been taken, are they being swapped out? Well, that's a really good question um, because I can't confirm anything, but if we look at family members a la a Biden family, there mm -hmm. aren't innocent people. Yeah, okay, yeah. All right? And so uh, I don't know if anyone is really looking to determine if particular family members are innocent because there's so much to deal with the guilt, the guilty people uh -huh. that I would suspect that given there's a concern about humanitarian effort that some people have discussed that, but it's it, it's definitely not it's not crossed anything that I've seen, been told, been part of, or anyone I know that has brought that up. You know, Tom, it just strikes me that there would almost be some sort of self-preservation uh, immunity or self-censorship if if in the event your bad guy dad or bad guy mom was involved in something nefarious, then that just to protect the kids and the family and the reputation out of fear yeah. of just being shamed alone would almost create a, a gravitas towards wanting to be mom's the word, you know, and self censor yeah. themselves. Yeah. And, and there may be on top of that, some financial incentives or witness protection or whatever might be necessary yeah. to, to get someone out. Again, a lot of times things happen and the other rest of the family members are clueless about it, right? Yeah. That, that can happen, I, but I'm speculating purely, you know. Yeah. So probably a blend of the things we're talking about and maybe other things, because you talk about the Bidens, for example. So we've seen plenty of things with him, you know, pulling what looks what something loose on the back of his neck mask <laughs> and all that stuff, you know? So it's like, okay. And that's the other thing that's interesting in numbers. So we've mentioned it before, 217 went, uh, Mission Impossible, but Mission Impossible mask is 261. 261 comes to um, the Project Looking Glass. It comes to the United States of America. It comes to November 22nd with JFK. It comes to August 31st with Princess Diana. Um, 261 has a lot of potent important numbers and one of them is mission impossible mask or even mission impossible anon so yeah so a blend but that's interesting i hadn't thought about that part about the bubble but as soon as you started talking about that that made sense it's like what well, to kind of you know to protect your any integrity that you might have um to kind of close the ranks and mum's the word yeah if you've got a dad or a stepdad or someone that's been busted then you're probably going to try and keep that as quiet as possible for as long as possible, if you can, yeah. Or if they were smart enough, they kept family members ignorant. Yes. Yeah. And then comes back to the first question. Right. Where's he, where's he gone? Ah, well, we've got another one that's coming, you know. So there's probably a few options, I'm sure, and probably time will tell with more of that. But or if they suddenly if they, disappear, if, where do if, they what, go? What you're sort of implying is... Um, do I have a fake dad here? Do I have a fake mom here? Do I have yeah. a fake judge here? Um, yeah. It, and and do I know or why? Uh, I don't know if you caught the pictures that when Biden supposedly uh, was injured by his dog and hurt his foot, in one picture, he's got the boot on yeah. one leg, 
and then you get them on another day and the boot is on the on another. other leg. <laughs> I know. I know. There's, there's, the boots have been an amazing, funny piece of this. I saw, so a year is either a year, 2019, or maybe the end of 2018, I was watching a, a concert with a lot of different artists, and one of them was Rod Stewart. And he's up there on stage at Wembley Arena, hobbling around on one leg, singing away, giving it, oh, um, Maggie May, and, and he's in a boot. But then he's been in a boot again later, and there's been so many of them that have been, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger sat there with the boot, you know, he got yep. booted. There's, like, there's so many of them that have, are wearing boots, and it's like, saw one of Mel Gibson recently with a boot, which didn't look good. Oh, yeah. Oh, have you done uh, gematria for Operation Mockingbird? Let's have a look. Operations one thirteen, which is trumpet, which is universe, takes you back to you know twenty twenty election one one three. But let's look at Mockingbird. Um, oh, to kill a mockingbird, some people's favorite films, um, or film. M O C K I and G. So mocking is 72, which is money, which is interesting. So they've been mocking us with that. Um, and bird, I think, is magic. Yeah, which is 33. So um, yeah, money magic. Money, oh, money oh, magic. Mo yeah. Mocking bird equals money magic. How about Let me that? double check. I believe that's what it comes to. Yeah, I think it does. How about that? Isn't that cool? Yeah, so mocking. Yes. Let me double check on mocking. M O C K I N G. Oh, hang on. I might have done mocking wrong. Let me double check. M O C K. No, that's right. Yeah, mocking. Yeah, mockingbird. Um, on one, th 218, Operation Mockingbird. 218. <laughs> that's an interesting number. Um, yeah, Operation Mockingbird. <laughs> that's making me laugh now. But yeah, Mockingbird. Yeah, money magic. Well, Tom, um, I found I found the seven core principles, and they're really dynamic on this. Okay, have a look. Yeah, please. Yeah. So it was, again, it was dated February three, twenty seventeen. By the power vested in me as president, by the Constitution and the laws of the United States of America, again written in upper lower case instead of all uppercase, it's hereby ordered as follows: Section one. It shall be the policy of my administration to regulate the United States financial system in a manner consistent with the following principles of regulation, which shall be known as core principles. Number one, empower Americans to make independent financial decisions and informed choices in the marketplace, save for retirement, and build individual wealth. Number two, prevent taxpayer-funded bailouts. Number three, foster economic growth and vibrant financial markets through more rigorous regulatory impact analysis that addresses systemic risk and market failures, such as moral hazard and information asymmetry. We know all the stuff we're not going to tell you. We're going to screw you based on your ignorance is information asymmetry. Enable American companies to be competitive with foreign firms in domestic and foreign markets. That's been a 40-year-long fetish of his, talking about currency manipulation and foreign exchanges and playing games to make one country more competitive than the other. He wants yeah. to knock all of that out. Make regulation efficient, effective, and appropriately tailored. And the last one is Restore public accountability within federal financial regulatory agencies and rationalize the federal financial regulatory framework. So all of those things, there's two things central bankers hate more than anything on this planet. One is transparency and the second is accountability. And every one of those things required transparency and accountability, which would make them make Donald Trump target number one for the central bankers. Yeah. Seven steps. Donald Trump in numbers is 138, which is revaluation 138. And it's the gold reset 138. <laughs>
Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> yep. And his, his, uh, so they say he was, well, <clears throat> officially he was born in 1946. 46 in numbers is um, the atomic number for palladium, so one of the precious metals. Mm -hmm. Bobby's 46, Dove is 46, Best is 46. And then if you go to the other one of the main four, platinum, the atomic number for platinum is 78, which is Kennedy. So it's like, you know, you've got the Trumps and the Kennedys on across the, the precious metals. But yeah, and... and my understanding, one says there's one's even more expensive, but rhodium looks like it's probably the the most expensive one people can maybe purchase. So it's just under a, a million bucks a kilo. But rhodium in numbers, when you spell it, rhodium comes to 88 in numbers, which is Trump. And then the atomic number for that is 45, and he's the 45th president. And then the atomic symbol is RH, which is 26, which is card which is game, which is God, but you've got Trump card or Rhodium card, you know, 114, which is JFK, J, well, Junior, um, Trump card frequency, sovereign. Yeah, so his, his President Trump numbers are embedded completely in all the precious metals. Can, you know? can, can you tell me what Ripple is in Gematria? Yeah, 76, a magic wand. Okay, let's go back to Ripple. There was one song written by the Grateful Dead, Ripple. And John Perry Barlow was uh -huh. influential in naming the company Ripple because of the founder's affection for Ripple. And John Perry Barlow taught JFK Jr. how to fly on his ranch in Montana. Did it? John Perry Barlow was the father of the Internet Bill of Rights. He was very much a libertarian constitutionalist. He was very good friends with JFK Jr.'s mama and JFK's wife. And she would send him out of New York to his ranch in Montana to learn how to taught. He taught him how to fly. Wow. So there is so much Grateful Dead, John oh. Perry Barth. There's so much in there that you ought to have a field day with this. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a YouTube song. If you'll go out on YouTube and look up Ripple Song. Uh -huh. uh, all of the symbology and the imagery in it is so foretelling of fortunes and symbology about money and wealth and freedom and captivity and and riches. It it'll blow your mind. It, I I can't even. I'm in the kiddie pool with all of this yeah. stuff. I've been looking at it, but it's really amazing stuff. Yeah. It's interesting you talk about Ripple. So I remember first learning about Ripple early 2020 and thinking. We're going to see all the things we've been hoping for happen imminently then. You know, I was like, it's going to happen now. It's like, why can't I do this? It's going to happen now. And uh, <laughs> I remember President Trump doing a brilliant metaphor about snooker, the game snooker or snooker, as you guys would pronounce it. Um, and there's a, I saw it again today. There's a, there's a, there's a snooker player called Judd Trump. And he's a well-known player. Um, but Judd Trump, when you do the numbers, is comes to 127, which comes to the ace of space, but it comes to November 5th, November 5th. And we've always been told to remember, remember it. And they've chosen that election day for some reason. Um, but uh, Ripple, there's also references to Ripple, direct references to Ripple in Back to the Future. So that's one of my favorite films for all these codes because JFK's in it. President Trump's in it because you have to travel 88 miles per hour to time travel. Time travel is 125, John Kennedy, Dark to Light, 125. Um, 88 is obviously Trump. But then at the end of the film, um, Emmett Brown, who Emmett Brown's 148 in numbers, which is Donald J. Trump, simple geometry of 148, Donald J. Trump. He says to Marty, Marty 77, which is Christ, he says... It's the ripple effect because they've changed. They've done the whole time change. And uh, I was like, ah, that's the reference to ripple. And then in the very first few moments of Back to the Future, you've got Doc Brown wearing a kind of hazard suit. And the old symbol of ripple before they changed it, and they changed it in 2020, it used to kind of be like almost that kind of radioactive sign, the three kind of signs. And I remember watching that. I was like, that's that's... That's the ripple symbol. And then a few months later, they changed it. So you have to kind of look back at, you know, the, the first symbol of ripple. Looks very much like the symbol on the back of Emmett Brown's 
hazard suit when they're doing the time travel at 88 miles per hour, you know. Um, and then another film. You have to watch it. <laughs> have to watch it, yeah. Another film um, is Love Actually. So it's this Christmas kind of romance comedy. Mm -hmm. Hugh Grant and others are in it. And Liam Neeson is in it. And he out of nowhere just says Stella. He just he just says it out. It's, he just comes out with the word Stella. I was like, that's a reference to Stella. And then um, Charlie sent me something a few months ago. There's a new cartoon with the fish. I can't remember what it's called, but it's there's lumens and Ripple. Uh, I think Stella. Ripple. That's it. Ripple and yeah, lumens. Yeah. Ripple and lumens. Yeah. And XLM is one of those eight ISO approved. Yeah. Tokens project. What are the other? So I, I'm obviously I'm aware of very aware of XRP, um, XLM. There's XDC. How do we look at that? And what what are the other what are the other five? Well, so there's XDC. Five. There's HBAR. There's ALGO. There yeah. is uh, IOTA. Uh, yeah. XRP, XLM. Uh, I believe Circle. I believe uh, there's a stable coin. Um, the USDC is one of them on the list as well. Don't don't hold me to that. I'll, I'll need okay. to look it up. I'll look it up for you. But uh, and again, more than I've anything, not heard of H bar before. Not yeah. heard of that. There we go. Quant. That was the one I was missing. Quant, Ripple, Stellar, Hedera, IOTA, XDC, Algo, Cardano, uh, and Verge. Now some of these on this huh. list are recommended or under watch, but haven't actually gotten the complete green light. Some are okay. under observation, and I'm not sure which one of those are 100% with the green light. And But I know XRP and XLM is. I know HBAR is. I know. I think I think Cardano ADA is on the watch list, yes. and it's about to be approved, but it's not fully What approved. about XDC? I think one of the things I sent you had the four that were definitely approved. Um, XDC is a smart contract application. It's basically a, a, a way. Actually, I had Quincy Jones, who is one of the lead XDC developers on my Spaces call on Wednesday. And he's a brilliant guy. He put it out on his YouTube channel. So if anyone wanted to go listen to it. But Quincy is really focused on, you know, it, let's say in 10 years time, Tom, basically everything of value in the world is going to be tokenized, okay? Because the world is going to become a world where everything is either on-chain or off-chain. That's 100%. Uh, that'll be 100% of everything in the world. Anything of value will either be on-chain or off-chain. All things being equal and the fact that it's so cheap to put something in tokenized form, which is a token that represents the actual thing right you could tokenize a cow and then you could trade the cow around without having to put the cow on a truck and drive him in a truck everywhere right yeah. you can have a representation of the cow so a cow tokenized versus a cow not tokenized has greater value because it can be liquefied it can be you can get credit you can you can sell it you can sell the rights to the the milk off the cow instead of the cow itself at the end of the day, everything in a digital ecosystem is either going to be on-chain or off-chain. That's why you even heard the folks at Davos and World Economic Forum last week. If nothing else, they agreed on the, the movement towards tokenization, that things can be tokenized. Now, if they're tokenized and listed on the New York Stock Exchange and registered by the DTCC, that sucks because they can still do a bail-in and take your property, right? So then, so. It's got to be things are going to be tokenized, whether they're registered or not, whether they're in a in a global NGO environment or they're in my personal property and there's nobody that can take them from me. If they're titled in my name and they're tokenized, that's better. OK, but it's really it, it's, it's so important to understand the role that XDC is going to play in the world of tokenization, and that is. A music right, a royalty stream, a car title, your medical records, your voting history, your gold bars, your cows, your lane, whatever you have of value that can be tokenized, it can then be on the blockchain and ledgered for and every transaction is there for a thousand years. You don't have two sets of books anymore. You don't have the State Department's books and Hillary's books 
and the United Nations books and my books and the tax record in the Congress's hidden books, when things are on a blockchain and they're tokenized, transparency happens. And you when you say XDC, you mean crypto? Well, XDC is Zenfin is the company and XDC is the kind of the token within Zenfin, okay. which is the corporation. And Zenfin is if you will, the digital version of a contract that can be added to an asset. So that it says, you know, if it turns 82 degrees next week and the sun is bright, then that property becomes, you know, I'll pay you $50 if you cut my hair. There's a contract on that. But if you don't cut my hair, I don't pay you the 50 bucks. So the terms and the conditions related to the transfer of that tokenized form of value, all of those terms and conditions have to be met and the contract automatically executes. You don't need to go to a court. You don't need a collection agency. You don't need to go to a judge. You don't need to do anything because the contract is the contract is the contract and it either is true or false. And so I'll be free to contract with you and you'll be free to contract with me and there goes all the lawyers. There goes all the court. There goes all the fat. There goes all the expense. If you yeah. cut my hair, you get the money. You don't cut my hair, you don't get the money. So that's why, that's why smart contracts are going to be so critical in the new era of us becoming our own bankers and our own keepers of wealth. And we get rid of all that intermediary bureaucracy involved. Yeah. That's what it's interesting. The word blockchain mm -hmm. is 78, which is Kennedy. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you and, for me on this. <laughs> and crypto is 97, which is Kennedy's. And then currency is 107, which is Trump's. So you've got cryptocurrency, that's Kennedy's, Trump's. And then if you've got crypto, um, even if you say on blockchain, so on blockchain, because on is 29, Diana, on blockchain, comes to 107 comes to currency again you know tom let me let me 107 is currencies 107 is also bb netanyahu's birthday and 107 is the attack of israel into palestine yeah money yeah. at the heart right there think mm -hmm. about all of those 107s wow yeah. <laughs> and, and 107, it's quantum. Is 107. 107 yeah <laughs> it's quantum as well it's uh and it's Aquarius. Is Aquarius is quantum. And we just um, now are like day one of Aquarius. How about that? I know. <laughs> Eternal life is is 107 as well. So both sides, you know, they both go for it. They both go for think, the... Think of this too, Tom, the, you know, water of life. You know, water is life. And you think about yeah. Ripple, the smallest form of an XRP token, which kind of runs on the Ripple XRP ledger. There's a drip. It's, it's, uh, there's like 100,000 drips per XRP token. So whatever the price is, you know, it can be subdivided down to, I think, one of 100,000. But there's a drip. And then there's a swell conference, which is what the, what the Ripple conferences are all about. They're about liquidity. They're about a level playing field. Well, level pool, level water, level playing field. So when you have drip and swell and liquidity, and, and leveling the, the, the pool, if you will, the water of life. I mean, there's so many unbelievable correlations between all of this. It's, it's, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, water is 67, which is reset, which is exchange. Ripple is 76. <laughs> so you've got 67 <laughs> is a mirror of 76, and you add them together as 143, which is November 5th. And level playing field is 176, which is, November the 5th, which is Back to the Future. And liquidity is 126, which is 107. Jan just mentioned it. And atomic number for silver is 47, which is John, which is Dr. Jan, which is France, um, which is Sarah, which is Rachel, which is it's a whole bunch of things. But then um, the atomic number for gold is 79. So 79 plus... 47 is 126, which is liquidity. So atomic number for gold, atomic number for silver, and together is 126, which is liquidity. Um, okay. I yeah. have been recommending a book for people to read called Double Crossfire. Double Crossfire. Okay. Yes. It is, it's a fiction book, but it's nonfiction in fiction by Brigadier General A.J. Tata, T-A-T-A, who was number three 
at the Department of Defense in the Trump administration. And I have encouraged people to read it when they say, is there a plan? What's going on? Because the antagonist is a woman who ran for president and lost. And she hires assassins to kill the Speaker of the House, the Vice President, and the President. So she, because she's pro Tim, she then would become the president. But it is the intricacies of the story that gives you the idea, one, how the military operates, two, how the political plays go on, three, it will give you hope when you finish reading the book. Wow. Double Crossfire is 171, which is the revaluation. Donald Trump Magic 171. The River Thames 171. And that's next to 217, the Houses of Parliament. Wow. Doubles 59, Joker. Cross is 74, which is Jesus, Gematria, London. Fire is 38, Change, Gold, Balance 171. Wow. Tom, is there a way, could, could, could we show a video should we show a short video clip on a twitter feed uh yeah you should be able to or maybe you could do it you could do it from your end or i can do it from my end either one but this is probably one of the most powerful summary speeches most eloquently designed about the state of affairs of where we are today that i've ever seen and do you know who laura aboli is yeah, I know Laura. Yeah. Laura Aboli. If you go to her Twitter account, it's her pinned video that she just delivered. I don't know if you've seen it or not, but it's. Uh, yeah, when she's speaking at the. Yeah, yeah the 1119. So it's been out there for yes. a while. But yeah. if you, I don't know if your audience has seen it or not, but the, she puts an exclamation point basically on every single thing that we just talked about in this last hour. But that and that speech, it 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 reaffirms what the game is, who's doing what to whom and how, and how the, if we're going to drain the swamp, Tom, we have to stop the swamp's food supply system and their food supply is fake money. Yeah. Donald Trump has talked about fake news. He hasn't come out and said fake money, but that's what central bankers offer. They deal in fake money and they convince us to swap our life for their stuff with ink, on, paper with ink on it. You know, and it's, and then they tell us what it's worth because we look at our phone and go, oh, look, honey, we're wealthy. Look at my account until sort all of a sudden there's no numbers in the account anymore. But they have all the real property. They have the title. They have the land. They have the companies and stocks and gold and real estate and land. And we like, wah, wah, wah. you know, the money goes down and we don't have anything left anymore. But they trained us our whole life to work like crazy for digits on a screen. Yeah. And they That's own all the real stuff, and we own the digits until the digits go bye bye. Yeah, and uh, that—that's the system that we've got to stop. We yeah, have definitely. to go back to a real system. Talking of the of the um, the ISO um, regulation, so uh, so well, actually, Basel three. So I've heard, I haven't like done immense research on it, but I've heard that HSBC is compliant. Is that true from your knowledge? And do you have any kind of high street banks here in the UK, in the US that are actually compliant? Do we know? And how, how can people find out if their banks are compliant? You know, I got that question just before we came online. And I'll be honest, I'm going to have to humble and humbly say, I don't know. I, I, it's right. a tremendous question. And I should know it. And I can't, I want to hit myself on the head for not knowing it because I've been deep in this tunnel for four years. I should know that answer, but I don't. And I will find it. Oh, okay, sure. that, well, that's good. Yeah, we can do it. We can post that and maybe do a follow up in our next show on who who is compliant. Yeah. Yes, um, can I, be, yes, can I please. Can. A couple of other dates to you. Yes. Um, when William the Conqueror um, gave the sovereignty to the city of London, it was technically 1067 when it went into effect, but it was issued on 1225-1066. Ah, so Christmas Day. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, then, here's the next, is in 1199, 
King John because the um, the charter for the city of London that William the Conqueror gave had to be renewed every year. It wasn't until 1199 when King John reinforced their ability to self-government, self-govern. And okay. it's very interesting because if you look at the problem in Florida that Ron DeSantis had with Disney World, they basically created that same model of governance because they existed like the city of London within the state of Florida. Did they? Yes. Yes. Huh. There's 133 years difference between 1066 and 1199. That's 130, 133's government simulation. Interesting. Hmm. The other thing that the city of London, the Crown Corporation that rules so much, they have always been exempt from any Freedom of Information Act. In other words, exempt from transparency and yeah. exempt from any Human Rights Act. Exempt from Human Rights Act? Yep. Because they're the... Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, Tom, I would just say that we've got to recognize as we have to fundamentally ask a question, are we human beings or spiritual beings? And do mechanical admiralty laws exist or does law with a capital L exist? And if law with mm -hmm. a capital L exists, they can't exempt themselves from, you know, debasing children or debasing this world. I don't care who wrote it and I don't care what date mm -hmm. it happened. If, law, if spiritual laws and truths apply to this earth, Nobody right. is beyond law. Right. We have to be, we have to accept or consent to the, the story or the authority that, oh, well, you can't touch us because of this document. I, the hell we can't, right? I mean, if they're doing things that are mad, that are genocidal and crimes against humanity, and it's just nothing that we should ever, ever permit, I don't care what's on paper. Do you? No, I don't. <laughs> and and if I can bring up one other point is that um, because there has been a small group of people in uh, on X that have been trying to say that the U.S. was not part of a corporation. And it's important to understand the Crown Corporation um, the uh, District of Columbia, it has its constitution, but when the word corporation is used in relation, it doesn't mean as a business, it means as a governing body, just like shareholders and bylaws. It is not a business, but as a corporation, it is a governing body. It's it's word salad. It's word magic. It's a it's a narrative war. We've been fighting since the garden. A narrative war, yeah. and whoever can convince us that they're right wins, right? And it, yeah. it's a narrative. It's a narrative war always about everything. They change. Why do they constantly change the meaning of everything? Yeah, exactly. To keep the the spelling and word and spelling and cursing words, swords. It's all the yeah, it's all a, that's what it is, yeah. is consciousness. It's about for people's consciousness. Yes, yes. It's about lies. It's about fooling. It's about manipulating. It's about twisting the truth. It's about greed, fear. obsessive power. Fear. 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 Using fear. That yeah. is the underlying emotion that they go after. Yeah. The number one most oft-repeated command in the law book, and again, we like I like to I'm a theologian and a and a kind of philo philosopher of, of faith, but uh, 365 times the law book says fear not. Huh. 
300 and say, why? Because maybe they knew the currency of this world would be fear. And they would yeah. use and weaponize fear mm -hmm. to get us to consent, conform, obey, shut up, do what we're told, get back to work, pay our taxes. I mean, it requires us to obey for their system to function. And fear is the tool that they get us to obey. Fear and ignorance. My people are destroyed for their lack of knowledge. Knowledge. What do we know to be true, Tom? That's what destroys us. If we don't know who we are and whose we are, if we don't know what our identity is, we'll fall for anything, yeah. right? And it and this is so key, Tom. It's we're not. My people are not destroyed for lack of wishing, hoping, thinking, praying, speaking. I heard, I read, I saw, I prayed, I think, I wish. Maybe it would. No, knowledge. What kind of knowledge? Not an encyclopedic knowledge of the code of the IRS or all the UN statutes. It's a capital K no. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, spiritual laws, because we're spiritual beings. Yeah. We can have 45 trillion man-made laws, but that's not what's going to destroy us. What's going to destroy us is our lack of knowledge of our spiritual laws and truths, these what is our what is our declaration yep. of our declaration says these self evident truths. Yep. Yeah. yeah. The system can't cannot acknowledge self evident truths. They have to be okay. the givers, right? Yes. Definitely. Yes. We are spiritual beings. That's interesting. We are spiritual beings. Is two thirty three John Fitzgerald Kennedy. That's interesting. Yeah. And consciousness is um is one of your titles, Jan, 175. Um, I've got it here. Let me get this right. Hang on. It's also Lady Diana Francis Spencer. Actually, no, Diana Francis Spencer is 175 consciousness. But um one of the way we could say, yeah, so Jan Halper Hayes with the apostrophe. Sorry, not the apostrophe, with the dash. Dash is 32. It comes to 175. Oh, if you just do Jan Halper Hayes without the dash, it's 143, which is November 5th. So it's interesting. And and you raise November 5th. That's by our constitution. Uh, it is the first Tuesday of November that is always election day. Yeah. Every Every other year, basically. Yeah, and you're well, both actually every year because there have been some states that just had it in 2023. So yeah, it every every year. You're both um, Christian folk, and uh, so one of the scriptures in the Bible, in the Old Testament, Malachi. I like to use this one. So Malachi 3:10, it talks about the windows of heaven being poured out upon the people and how there's such a large blessing coming to the people that there's not enough room to receive it. And Malachi is 47, which is Dr. Jan, or which is John, which is France. But 310, because it's leap year next year, Jan, November 5th, Tuesday, November 5th, takes place on the 310th day of the year. And 310 comes to the quantum financial system. And on the bad side, it comes to the creature from Jekyll Island, which was Ed Griffin's book describing the fractional reserve bank. Right. So, but 310 and President Trump kept going down to Yuma, kept going down to the wall in Yuma in Arizona on the board. And he did it at least a couple of times from what I was paying attention. So from 2020 onwards, he probably did it before. But there's a film that's been made twice, one with Yul Brenner, Yuma, 310 to Yuma, and then another one with Christian Bell, years and years later, 310. So President Trump kept going down there to you, man. He wanted us to make the connection to 310. The 310th day of the year is Tuesday, November the 5th. Yeah. And yes, November the 5th comes to 246, which comes to the calling an election made sure, or calling an election made sure. There's an election there. And then it's also... Um, uh, Diana, 
the Princess of Wales 246. Anyway, there's many of them. And it's also in the twinkling of an eye, which is a biblical reference. In the twinkling of an eye, of an eye 246. Wow. Almost every single book. If you look at the book of and the it's two forty six here. Look at the look. It's two forty six here in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know that wasn't planned. That was just that just happened. Two forty six. Wow. Two forty six. Wow. Oh, almost go. as good as Q. Uh. <laughs> I'm being oh, cute God, for sure. Tom, yeah. Tom, almost every single miracle that ever took place in the law book happened in a day, one day. Yeah. It happens. Yes. It's going to take nine months to roll. When it happens, it happens. Exactly. Instant. Every That's single what instance of a of a like supernatural miracle takes place. Oh like yeah. That. Like a thief in the night. That's another biblical reference. Like a thief in the night is two hundred, and two hundred in in uh, numbers comes to Westminster Abbey. Abbey is thirty five. JFK thirty fifth president. One six five is resurrection. Westminster. But also Westminster Abbey 200 over the, across the pond, Mount Rushmore's 200. So Mount Rushmore is also 200, like a thief in the night. And if you go back to Westminster Abbey, 50 yards away on the Parliament Square, facing 217 Houses of Parliament, 217, which is 1871, which is Mission Impossible, which is Lady Diana Francis Spencer, there's a number of a bus stop right at the feet of Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln's 123. In a couple of days, it'll be one, two, three, silver and gold, one, two, three. Eric Trump, one, two, three. It's a magic thing, you know, like one, two, three. ABC, Michael Jackson did the ABC, one, two, three. But you look down at the bus stop and there's a number of a bus. In fact, it's a letter. Any ideas of what that letter might be? Q. It's a Q <laughs> bus stop. And one of the numbers of the bus that goes around Parliament Square is the 88 bus, which is Trump. So it's all been set up, you know. It's all there. And, and Tom, on 4th of July of 2020, didn't Trump leave Mount Rushmore to fly back to the White House to sign the new Declaration of Independence? The he did, and actually he was... The it new was actually Constitution? On, he did. And he was actually, when he gave that marvelous speech, that was on actually July 3rd because of the because of the leap year. And July 3rd, well, July 4th ordinarily is, uh, is 185th day of the year, which is Donald John Trump. And he's born on the 165th day of the year, June 14th, and 165 is uh, is Westminster Resurrection. And isn't his swearing-in date going to be like his 77 years, seven months, and seventh day? Yeah, on the fifth? that's it. Yeah, right. 777, yeah. 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 Wow. Well, this has been great. This has been so much fun. And uh, we were discussing yesterday because he – will re-listen to the podcast, the interviews, and I don't. I am not only listening to this, I'm going to have to listen to it a couple of times to take notes yes. from everything that you said. You'll get some notes there. That's I've true. got one little, if you've got, it's, it seems like we've got to wrap it up, but one thing with the bus stop. So 123 Abraham Lincoln, looking at the Q bus stop. So Q 17 plus 123 comes to 140, comes to the military comes to the Trumps, comes to the quantum, but it also comes to Tom Numbers. And I found that early in 2020, I was like, did I have put that there somewhere in my future? I don't know, <laughs> but it's there. And before we go, we'll do this quick. We might pick up on it later in a future show, but I've got, I just wanted to make a couple of observations about Roswell. If we've got time for it, if we've got five minutes, you have five minutes, Jan? Yeah. So Roswell Roswell in numbers is 104, which comes to Starlink, comes to Jerusalem, interesting enough. So Roswell, and it comes to the number 14, if you spell 14, Roswell was reported on July 8th, 1947. They say it kind of occurred over June stroke July, reported on the 8th of uh, July, 1947. The CIA was created shortly after on the 18th of September, 1947. And then Israel was also created shortly after that on the 14th of May, 1948. I'm just wondering if we've got any thoughts on the significance of 1947 with Roswell, the CIA and, uh, and Israel. And I'd also add to this um, Space Force because 243 is a really important number. It's the city of Westminster, 243. It's Queen Elizabeth II, 243. 
Central Intelligence Agency's 243, but also John F. Kennedy Eternal Flame is also 243. And United States Republic is 243. And I saw that today when President Trump, with his inauguration, they did the fireworks and it was USR. And I, I, I've only just seen that today, but it happened ages ago. So there's um, a lot of stuff with it all, you know. Well, there is. And and if we could touch on it the next time, because I, I, I'm I curious about how the Balfour Declaration played into it, which was in yeah. 1917, and that was 11-2. Was that 1917? Yes, the Balfour Declaration. That's yes. the year of Kay's birth. And and it went into effect in 1923. Right. Um, and then, uh, yes, it became Israel became a state at 51448. Um, but the Palestinian plan was announced in 1947. And then what we have is the wars that immediately created the conflict. So if we could do if we could delve into this another yes. time i think yeah yeah that would be very good tom and maybe jan y'all dr jan you'll both know tell me when was the universal agreement to make antarctica off limits to everybody wasn't that 47 or 48 uh, it it, that, it, I don't know, but it sounds it sounds familiar with. What I think that was yeah. about the time that they said it became a no fly zone. It became top secret. Yeah. How do you get? I mean, that's almost as strange to get all the nations in the world to sign off on something like that. Is as yeah. as, as, as mind blowing as 195 nations signing off? You know, for the yeah the, for the you know what you know. It's like why? That's why a really good point hold? you brought that. Yeah, because I. I have, a, I have a little theory on this. It kind of came to me today as I was going through stuff. And maybe we can talk about it next time. But if you do uh, Roswell, that's 104 in numbers. The place, the town I was born was Hillingdon, Middlesex, 104. The, 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 the road we grew up on was Snowden, which is also 104. <laughs> Different from Edward Snowden. But then um, Jerusalem's 104. But if we just do Roswell, 104, plus Space Force 91, that comes to 195. 195 is a number in the other physics. One's told me about this. It's actually a rounded up number. It's actually 19.47, which is a direct reference to Roswell and all these things around 1947. I'm wondering if, in the beautiful movie that we're in, I'm wondering if Space Force came in at the same time as these other things came in, and this battle has been going on since then. And we're going to see the culmination of it. What and what is Antarctica and Gematria? Let's have a look. A N T A R, and then the next one. Arctica T I C A. T R T A. So A N T. A R T mm -hmm. I C A I C A. Hang on. Is it not? Is it Antark? Is, is there an arc and then ticker? Is it that? Let me just double check on here. Hey, uh, sir, still A, A N. Oh, yeah, it is. It's got that. A N T A R C and then T I C A. That's it. Yeah. So Three it would be. We had to ask Siri how to spell it. <laughs> A R C T I C A. Antarctica. Ah, 90. Okay. If I've done it right, Antarctica is 90, which is economy, which is boomerang. Um, let me just double check that. And A N T A R. Yeah, I believe that's what it is. I believe it's 90. Yeah. Antarctica. That's 90. 
And if you spell 90, uh, 42, T. Yeah, so if you spell the word 90, it comes to 87, which is stellar, which is junior, which is justice, which is truth. So maybe there's something out there with Antarctica that is they don't want us to know, but it nevertheless it's something. But it, yeah, that that's a great point that it will happen around that time. I guess yeah. we could look at we could look it up. Antarctica Treaty. When was that? Here we go. Let's have a look. Uh, ah, this one's. I thought it was around that time. So it's it. Unless there's been a couple of them, it says the Antarctic Treaty 1959, but was there another one prior to that? Well, can we leave that for the next time? Yeah, let's do that for next time, yeah. One yeah. other thing I'd like to leave you for the next time as well, Tom, to tee up. Apparently, this year, 2024, is the largest year there will be for elections in world history. 42 yeah. major worldwide elections take place in this year of 2024 the most that's ever occurred in recorded history so what's the you know what's the likelihood of coincidence that we're having such an ascension of consciousness and and this this movement away towards totalitarianism in the same year we're having more global elections than any other year in history yeah so we have a lot to discuss next yeah. time we do thank you ladies and gentlemen it's been a pleasure. <laughs> 42 Thank is you. war and 42 is new. And it might be the answer to the universe according to Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So being a Bushnell, are you related to Sex and the City author Bushnell? Can do. I don't know. I, do you know her? Have you worked with her? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know. Um, someone I knew a long time ago used to love watching that show, but yeah. I don't know. I probably because I don't know too many Bushnells. There is the Bushnell binoculars and sight finders and range finders mm -hmm. telescope. I'd love to get them. Maybe we we'll get them as a sponsor. They're out of Kansas City. So if you do Kansas City, Missouri, it's the Twin City. It's two forty-five Thomas Sydney Bushnell, but they're actually just on the other border. <laughs> they're just right on the border, and they're actually on Street Night on Ninety Third Street. And it's number 92. So it's like 92 is number of <laughs> the 93's Bushnell. I've oh. physically been to their offices. You know, they look a bit like the um, Skynet in the, or Cyberdyne in Terminator. But yeah, that's a good question. I don't, somewhere probably along the line, Jan, probably yes. Okay. But I, I don't know her. I don't know her. All right. And you're going to have to tell us about your Star Wars connection next time. All right. I will. Okay, well, thank, thank you. Jan, and thank you, Rob. How can people, what's the best way for people to reach out to you? On, is on Twitter? What's the best, is the best uh, way to I'm, that? I'm Biz Shrink, B-I-Z for the Brits, underscore shrink, or B-I-Z underscore shrink, on truth at real Dr. Jan. And yeah. my sub stack is Dr. Jan, dot substack dot com brilliant okay and yourself rob yeah uh cool show it's k-u-w-l-s-h-o-w so at cool show is on x and my substack is uh i also have a website cool dot show and my substack is rob cunningham dot substack dot com Excellent. And Rob Cunningham in numbers is 139 money exchange. So <laughs> there you go. How about that? Oh my that's, God. That's amazing. Okay. All right. <laughs> I can't wait till next time. Thanks, Jan. I really appreciate this. And thank you, Rob. Oh, Tom. And also thank you. a shout out to Steve Forsyth, who put me and Jan together. He's a great patriot, yes. great, uh, great yes. military man. So thank you, Steve, for, for connecting us. Yeah. Definitely. Tom, it's a pleasure to, to speak with you and meet you all at the same time, but thank you. You're welcome. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Jan. Thanks, Rob. God bless both of you. God bless. Bye. Bye.